80% of the candidates get rejected in this round of data science interview. In this video, we are going to learn a step-by-step -step framework to attempt data science case study interview questions. You see, if you are preparing for data science interview, then you must watch this video till the end to double your chances of success. I and many of my colleagues have already tried and succeeded in data science case study questions following this framework. However, if you are not preparing for data science interviews, then perhaps you can save this video for future reference. To start off, we need to first understand the intent behind the case study interview round in data science. You see, the interviewer wants to understand two things. First, your critical thinking ability when solving a real world problem. Second, your ability to apply data science concepts to bring solutions in a real world problem setting. We shall learn this eight step framework by taking a real example from Uber. This case study that we are going to attempt in the next 15 minutes appeared in the data science interview of Uber. So we know that this question appeared in the data science interview of Uber. And the question goes as Uber is looking to reduce its driver churn by improving the driver experience. How would you use data science to identify the factors that contribute to driver churn and then take the steps to reduce it? Additionally, you need to provide the metrics that would be useful in evaluating the performance or in evaluating the intervention. Right? So you understand the question clearly that we need to understand why the drivers are churning and additionally we need to provide the strategies to reduce the churn. All the while we need to provide certain metrics in order to compare the intervention or in order to compare the performance change. Right? Okay. So the first thing or the very first step that you need to take is understanding the business problem. We understood the business problem. We understood that it is about the churn rate of drivers and the business wants to reduce its churn rate to help improvise the driver experience by improvising the driver experience, right? And additionally, you need to provide certain strategies to help them overcome the challenge. Now, the second step that comes is clarifying the questions. So when you ask clarifying questions, it provides an impression to the interviewer that you are readily involved in this question and you understand the question well. It also presents your willingness to understand the business context. You see, case study round is all about combining the data science concepts to solve the business con business problem, right? You provide a solution only which is theoretically possible will is not going to help. You need to provide solution which can be applied in the framework of the business. So always ask clarifying questions to get started, right? You can always take a pause, use pen and paper to note down these questions and then think through, right? So some of the primary questions that we could ask here are, how should we define churn? Right? The first question that should come to our mind is, how do we define churn? The second question, what time frame are we considering? Whether this churn is involving, say, one month from now, whether it involves six months from now, whether it involves predicting the churn for the next week or the next day or the next few hours. Right? So that time frame needs to be defined for the context. And the third is, what kind of problem are we proposing? Whether we are proposing who is going to churn in the time frame or we are proposing which drivers are likely to churn in that time frame, right? So how do you define the problem statement is going to uh, have a difference in your approach. So ask these clarifying questions and then let us see what could be some of the probable answers provided by the interviewer. We are taking some examples here. In your setting, this could be different. Right? Because this is an open-ended case study, there is no right or wrong answer and there could be multiple approaches to solve the same problem. So some of the possible answers that could be provided here are, churn refers that the driver has stopped accepting rides for a given period of time. So here by churn we mean that the driver is not accepting any more rides for the given period of time. 
we are considering the behavior around peak office hours 8 pm to 10 pm on a working day so we are considering the behavior in the peak office hours say we want to make uh, we our target window is in the next time frame and we want to determine which drivers are likely to churn and why are they more likely to churn right instead of determining when the driver is going to churn we are determining which drivers are more likely to churn so this is a classification setting right instead of a time series based setting this what we are proposing here is a classification setting so now you have asked your clarifying questions you could ask more clarifying questions even cross questions that come up based on these these are just some of the examples right the third step out of the eight total steps the third step is to structure your approach now that you understand the business problem you have asked some clarifying questions to help you get started it's time to convert the business problem into the data science problem and how do you do that in the setting of the business whatever the problem that you have you translate it as a data science problem like for example here given the data driven given the driven driver data determine the factors that lead to driver churn and predict which drivers are more likely to churn in the time frame so we have a defined constraint time frame we are proposing a classification solution and we are predicting the likelihood of churn for any driver the fourth step that comes and the most important step is collecting the data what data are you going to need in order to analyze in order to build your solution so intuitively think of what data could be useful here right one of the f the primary data that could be useful here is the driver history the trip history of the driver the number of trips taken the total sorry the total distance traveled the total earnings of the driver historically as well as during the day additionally what macroeconomic factors could be helpful here right you could think of say you could think of the weather the climate right if if the weather is not very suitable then the driver may not be likely to go out and accept rides right what other factors could be possible here traffic congestion incentives data additionally one important aspect to consider here is app interface data whether there is something going wrong with the app itself in the peak official hours in the peak office hours when the network congestion is high due to which the drivers are not able to accept rides right so this is also one of the possibilities is this is how you think through and build your own solution right the more you are able to think the multiple approaches the multiple directions it shows your clarity of thought then we come to the next step right the next step is understanding the data whatever data you collected based on your different paths that you want to explore you now need to explore the data and understand what insights can you draw from it the primary eda in order to perform eda there could be different techniques you could use various statistical methods which i have already created as part of a separate lecture which you can find in the i link above you can check it after watching this now coming to some of the primary things that you need to undertake while performing eda you can segregate the entire database right there could be a huge number say hundreds of thousands of drivers all across the geography in uber right because you uber is a huge company so you could segregate these drivers based on the geographical location based on the age based on the ratings this could help you this could make things simpler for you to understand and analyze right you could use your own techniques your own methods here for the eda the objective needs to be clear the objective is to understand what insights can we draw from this given data which are leading to driver churn right so say we found few primary factors that earning of the driver is highly correlated to churn number of trips to the historical average is quite high is highly correlated with the churn of the driver additionally we found that interface is facing heavy load not allowing some drivers to accept rides and geographical location as well as weather forecast are also playing a critical role here so some of these primary driving factors have been determined based on our statistical analysis based on our exploratory data analysis when you provide 
ideas or related to say statistical tests, various statistical measures, then it gives the interviewer an impression that you are aware of those techniques and you are capable of utilizing them. Right? So, you should be aware of these various statistical techniques which I have provided in the other video. Okay, now that you have established your initial drivers, initial factors and you understand your data, it's time to propose the solution. Go down the approach and propose the solution. Okay, so when building the solution, when building the machine learning solution, you need to first consider what kind of problem that we had. So, we already set the context as a classification problem and in the classification setting, this is a binary class classification problem because we are going to determine whether the driver is likely to churn or not as a probability and then further classify as ones and zeros, right. Some of the things or certain factors that you should consider when building machine learning solution. The focus should be on interpretability because we want to determine the factors that are leading to the change or leading to the churn, right. We cannot directly put the data to a deep learning model and get the solution because their interpretability is very difficult. The second thing is robustness. Whatever model, whatever solution that we build should be applied across multiple geographies across different uh, uh, say regions right so this should be robust the solution needs to be robust we need to consider the class distribution as well say during our eda we find that at on any given day five percent of the drivers are likely to churn so now this gives a class imbalance of 95 to 5 right so when building the solution you need to keep in mind of the class distribution as well if you directly go for solutions that are not able to handle this class imbalance you could directly predict uh, the uh, you could directly have a model say with 95 percent accuracy but based on a prior knowledge based on our earlier videos we know accuracy is not a reliable metric when your data is imbalanced right what kind of metrics could be useful there precision recall roc auc right so these are some of the techniques, some of the metrics that could be you helpful there and we have already talked about this in the video above in the i link. Okay. The we need probabilistic outcome. So, when we talk of probability, one of the primary models that come to our mind, one of the primary solutions that come to our mind is around logistic regression, right. Logistic regression gives us probabilistic outcomes. There could be other solutions as well, but just for the intuition, you can think of yes, we can apply and see what is the baseline result using logistic regression. The scale of the data, if the data set is huge, then you could you, you might also need to think of distributed computing, right? You need to think of approaches because if the data set is huge, it is not you cannot directly use pandas to load the data if you are working with Python. We have talked of the different approaches to handle big data in Python in pandas as well using say dask or using different techniques which uh, involves like lo loading a couple of rows n number of rows all these techniques are also talked about in our earlier video again now here is a pro tip right if you try to maximize for the precision then chances are your recall would suffer now what is precision recall precision talks about how given all the positives whether they are true positives and false positives how many positives are getting detected whereas recall ab is about of all the actual positives how many are you able to predict so based on the business settings based on the business context precision and recall needs to be balanced accordingly right what you see here is a confusion metric this is a confusion matrix right now now it's time to select or to consider the metrics for comparing our solution for comparing our performance. What are some of the metrics that you can think of here? Can we consider accuracy? No, we already talked about this that we cannot consider accuracy for the primary reason that the class is imbalanced or the data distribution is not balanced. We can consider some of the metrics like precision recall, percentage of churn, right? supply to demand ratio now supply to demand ratio means at any given time the number of riders that are requesting a ride 
versus the number of drivers available to accept the ride. From the business perspective, we do not want the demand to be higher than the supply, nor do we want the demand to be much lower than the supply. We want to have an optimal number, right? So, six primary steps so far in order to build the framework. We have two more approaches there, but let us recall those six. The first is understanding the business problem. The second is asking clarifying questions. The third is structuring the problem, translating the business problem to a data science problem. The fourth is collecting the data. Fifth is understanding the data. And sixth is proposing the solution. Now the seventh step that involves here is proposing the various strategies that could help you reduce the churn rate or that could help provide better outcome. Now here you can you need to think from the business perspective. Your business thinking, your capability to understand the business comes vital here. You could again ask few more questions here and then propose for the solutions. Say in order to determine if there is a challenge in the app itself, you could propose A-B testing, right? A-B testing is very suitable in which you take a control group and you take a target group. Now you determine based on the control and target how your performance changes or varies, right? Providing higher incentives. This could be one of the techniques here. Now again, if you're providing higher incentives, it from the business implications, this could have a negative effect as well. So you cannot just keep on increasing incentives after incentives. There has to be a balance here. Your thoughtfulness about these things, about these say business terms, shows that you are capable to of handling such solutions. You are capable of building such solutions. And therefore, it gives you an advantage in the data science interviews, right? The other strategy you could produce, propose here is modifying the last trip location. So what, what could happen generally is, say the drivers are now located far away from the official region and therefore they are not very willing to travel back to the region in order to pick the riders. The distance is high. So what you can propose is the last trip of such drivers could be near the region, near the official region where we want our riders to make X rides right that is one of the strategies you could propose here again thinking on your capabilities you need to write down or you need to provide additional strategies some different strategies what you what comes to your mind and finally you need to summarize the entire solution that you have provided the strategies that you have provided and the solution that you have built now for those of you who have stayed here till the very last there is one bonus for you. I am going to provide you a link, a link to a page or a website which is going to help you prepare for such case studies. I provided you one of the examples. There you will find numerous other examples as well. Go and check that website. Read through the various case studies that have been attempted, solved. You will also find YouTube links for that, for those videos. You can watch them and enjoy it. Have a great learning experience. Become a successful data scientist. See you in the next lecture. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Jai Hind. And if you like the content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up.